What is up guys, welcome to a brand new video. 620 is just around the corner, but this is kind of a cool time to look at some of the weirdest win rates going into the patch, like kind of off meta or champions you wouldn't think are strong, but are at the top. Let me know what you think of these or your weird picks in the comments. Remember to like it if you do, dislike it if you don't, but let's just jump in. The first one is something I've been trying out recently actually myself, and Avaris AD carry. In every single region, by the way, he's kicking some ass. I played this on my gameplay channel the other day, if you want to see how it works, by the way, so I guess I'll link that somewhere, but most people will play him a lot like Jin actually. That's kind of how I think of it. You have this long range, you stay kind of safe, you poke over and over and you don't even have to get close. Like its abilities is not really about your auto attacks. I know it's a bit different because Varus is a kind of more poke champion whereas Jin does a little bit of both I guess. But Varus' ultimate is insane. Like it can set up so many different things. Build wise it's like Ghost Blade, Man Immune, Dust Blade, more Man Mortius, Last Whisper, that kind of thing. So very like AD and arm pen focused. It's really similar to Jin actually with everything. Like even when rate stuff so like amazing early right in Korea right now he is the best at ending a game before 25 minutes and second best before 30 minutes and kind of keeps dropping after your poke kind of hurts more early right you get ahead and you just way too much to really deal with but just like going even is kind of enough I think honestly like you still do work if you hit those arrows we have all of these top tier ADs at the moment if you think about it like loads are ability based I guess Jinx is the exception right but that's because she has a rocket damage so she does loads of AoE damage champions like Misfortune, Jin, Varus they're kind of like abilities first, autos second. Like autos are kind of your backup plan, basically. I think he feels really good at the moment. Like if you get ahead or you don't fall too far behind early. Like if you get it behind though, you're kind of boned. But otherwise you should shove arrows right up their backsides. The second weird one is actually Scion, but it's in the jungle. And I actually played this on a stream yesterday. It does loads of damage, like really good. I actually rushed a Hydra though, to be fair. Then Titanic into full tank. You have a lot of threat with this guy. Like you can survive a long time in a team fight. Cinder Hulk stacks that health up, remember, which increases increases your titanic damage when you're farming the jungle that's pretty good like ganks aren't that bad either then later you're just going to be like a hyper tank as per usual right but with even more health because of the cinder hulk i was kind of surprised that this is so effective in every single region right now like i guess he's at the top of pretty much everywhere and that's not something you normally see like i know he's not really played very often i guess but he still actually does a really good win rate when he is played most of these junglers right now are carries right low health they do damage but there aren't really many tanks left and sun does provide that i think zach is still going to be a better version like honestly but decent as a pocket pick for sure just as a side note as well top and support sign have also good win rates recently maybe sign is just overall like a really good pick right now then now this one is a bit more weird than that actually another jungler another one with the same idea but mundo jungle he's most popular and best in europe at the moment in eu west he's okay in north america and korea but legit i played with one of these yesterday right and he almost out damaged me i was playing Jin and i had 15 kills it was unreal it works kind of the same way though like cinder hulk and then you stack health after was spirit visage like strength of the ages is your keystone maybe these two are kind of the new breed of jungle tanks now if you think about this maybe moving forward we're gonna see more of this they absorb damage really well right they stack resistances and health at the same time they have decent ganks so they can have some kind of pressure early they actually have okay damage as well mundo's damage will really surprise you especially with his e now that really really stings i kind of think that basically like mini zacks in that kind of way but they just don't have the long range engage i guess but they still tank a lot they still do decent damage and they can still frontline for their team. I want to get out of the jungle for a second because we've just stayed in there for ages. In Korea right now, Nautilus has suddenly taken a big leap up the past few weeks. With Soraka getting nerfed, like aggressive supports are back more and I guess nobody does that better really than him. Maybe Blitzcrank does a bit better but like probably my second most hated to play versus after Annie. He'll just sit there in lane, right? If he ever hooks you, it's like hook into auto which stuns you or like roots you in place I guess and his ultimate, even his damage, like it's really hard to play against that. I think we'll be seeing a lot more of him now remember he actually got buffed so his ultimate is going to stun along the line as well as the target it hits especially though with how ad carries are right now if we only look at it from the perspective of like who is going to be paired up with like misfortune you lock in place and misfortune is going to ult over the top which is perfect Jin is kind of the same if you think about it like you're going to root when Nautilus goes in and then just you know, keeps them in place while you're firing your ultimate shots off so you can't really miss even if you are a boost animal you're still not going to miss if that locks in place jinx is another one that probably you weren't expecting but Nautilus is like the ultimate peel machine with loads of crowd control so he keeps him in place away from jinx and jinx can just fire rockets over and over basically like a thresh on steroids another one is morgana mid actually that is crushing north america's solo queue but doing okay in europe and korea as well like at least top 10 in those other regions but even above that like top five in north america you have a really good lane a really good early and a mid game as well kind of like average late game though i think so you can do damage you actually do a lot you can root people when you have all this utility side but you're nowhere near as effective as mid 
game in my opinion. You do well versus these meta mids at the moment. You push hard, you stop them roaming in a way as well. Because if you're pushing them in or they can't actually push you in, then they can't really roam very well. Like it's really hard for them to get out of vision and move around the map. You can get picks quite easily with your bind. You do a lot of damage. Decent kill pressure actually if you bind into like ultimate as well. But team fights, you can zone, engage, peel. You have a lot of different choices. Your shield really is overpowered on any kind of carry on your team jumping in or protecting them. We're in a carry focus meta, remember. You're going to have carry tops, carry junglers, carry AD carries. It kind of means that you can skip some damage in the mid lane because these others are going to provide it. As far as carrying goes though, I think you have to do it before maybe like 35 minutes into the game. After that, you can still win obviously, but it's going to be more up to your team and how well they do. Javan Top in North America and Europe, so in EU West, is doing about as well as Morgana too. In Korea, he's pretty pre patchy, but they run a completely different build. We're using the Titanic Hydra into Black Cleaver and then like Deadman's or Ranon's build here. Now, Korea actually go for way more damage assassin style like Ghost Blade and then the Ravenous Hydra and uh, Dust Blade, stuff like that. This build we're using though gives you loads of damage early. You can crush your lane, but it also more of a tanky side to dive in in team fights. In my opinion, I think J4 is actually pretty strong right now. Maybe not like overpowered, but at least up there with the best. It really comes down to being useful at every single stage of the game though. So like you can one shot the enemy AD carry that really sucks to play against to be on. Well, okay, that's kind of obvious. Obviously, it's going to be sucky to play against. You can one shot the enemy AD carry and that really sucks to play against. It's hard to play against as well. That That's actually very obvious. Like obviously, it's going to be really hard to play against someone who one shots you. You can dominate the lane phase though if you go aggressive, good roams and you're really, really good TP ganks to other lanes. You TP down, you EQ in and then you just ultimate. It's really effective. I think it kind of fits into the same category maybe as Darius in my opinion, like a tank but a threat as well. Basically, the bruiser off tank role. He's not too popular at the moment, but still clearly a menace. And speaking of another menace, my last pick here actually is Nunu Jungle. This is going to be my last one before we break down like some individual weird ones from different brackets, I guess, different elos in power region. I'm not entirely sure why Nunu has popped back up right now, but there is like this trend, I guess, of tanks coming back and being a lot more useful. Actually, I have a kind of idea. So the game is going a little bit later now than I think it was like a month ago. Late game tanks are super important for team fights because you have to have someone to deal with the enemy AD carry, like someone to buy some time. Blood Boy was well on your AD carry and Iceborne theirs is like a massive difference in attack speed between the two ADs now. And actually, like, I think that's something that's really underrated. It's funny to me because when I think of Nunu, right, I think of this champion who should be really good early and evades all the time and kind of like poop later, I guess, when he's just a tank. But right now, it's actually the opposite. He's like met early and really good later. By the way, he actually has a top five win rate at the moment, like a low play rate for sure. But still, when he is played, he's annoying as balls to deal with. Items he stacks are also horrible to play against. So like ZZ Rot, Visage to heal him some more, Frozen Heart to reduce your attack speed, Locket, GA. They're all really annoying to play against as an AD carry. I honestly hate playing against him because he limits my damage output late game and kind of really a jinx counter to really. Maybe that is why he jumped up so much. Anyway, let's look at some random ass picks that I found digging through each region at specific elo brackets. Korea is up first and this time there's nothing like majorly weird except in bronze to gold. Like Karthas and Mordekaiser are really strong. These are two weird picks that need some patience and knowledge to win with, which normally means that I would expect them to be better at higher elo, but right now at low elo, these guys are gods. This is three patches in a row, by the way, that Mordekaiser has been top tier at lower ranks over there. I have no idea what is going on with that. Karthas is a very strong champion though, like he gets ahead early and takes over a game with his ultimate damage, and that doesn't really surprise me. In Diamond, we have two picks. Now, Draven is the first one, and that is a surprise because Koreans don't tend to play Draven. They do play him very different actually, though they use a completely different build to the one we do over here and i might actually do a video on that this week actually so let me know in the comments if you want to see that Xin Zhao has actually been here for weeks though like the late game jungler for koreans who can do crap early but still carry really hard later when he has like his blood razor maybe a blade of the ring king or something and then tanky stacks to actually kill people and still survive so for north america in bronze and silver brand is like a god like a king legit one of the best champions you can play right now this is support and mid by the way your damage is insane he's annoying again Again, like the slows and burns and stuff can have a really big impact in a team fight. It can bounce between everyone. He's still good in gold actually as well. Zin, by the way, is around a lot for all of these at these brackets as well. He's kind of like hovering in the top 20 for most of these. If we skip to platinum, like Mordekaiser is here in the top 20, mostly jungle.
jungle on top actually to be honest i think this is like the baron cheese strat is coming back again so when mordekaiser was like semi-popular in the mid lane and top lane like they would take dragon with the mordekaiser so you get the dragon ghost then they would go to baron and get the dragon to tank it and do damage for a baron for an easy rush for diamond i don't really want to say this one because i hate ergot but he actually is probably one of the best champions in north america in diamond at the moment he has a really low play rate and stuff but he is still really good when he is played in the us bronze and silver doesn't have anything too weird in gold trinum is actually quite high up and zin and brand again are also hovering around all of these lower ranks like the other regions in plat galio is kicking some major ass which is kind of cool to see but in diamond again like talent is basically the best mid laner you can play but i'm not sure if it's actually a few one tricks or something like that zin and leona are very high in diamond on eu west as well zin is like everywhere at the moment it seems he just gets ruined early so maybe that's why he's not showing up on most sides at the moment anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know what you think of these weird picks and give me some of yours in the comments as well but that's going to wrap up this video thank you for watching and i'll catch you in tomorrow's video